Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'll be showing you how to back up scripted. So if you have any hardware failures or if an update goes wrong or anything happens to software, you can easily restore it. And I've also uh, got a utility that I made to where it makes it more automated. Um, I'll be open sourcing that so people can contribute and, and if they have any ideas on how to make it better. Um, and also about this series is it's going over smart home automation. So going over the install process to creating servers, to setting up everything, setting up home automations. If you're into that and you like that, uh, subscribe, comment, like. And without further ado, let's get started. So I made a GitHub uh, repository on being able to uh, get the scripts that I made to back up and restore. And um, I've also got detailed information on how to uh, set up SSH on um, Proxmox. So we're going to do this today. So right, right now I'm going to start with this one. So we're going to need to set a root password on your Proxmox container. So I'm going to go over to uh, the scripted install of the first one that I created. I'm going to go to console. Then I'm going to um, paste in sudo password uh, root, and then I'm going to put in my password that I'm going to do, and password updated successfully. So next step is I'm going to use nano to change the SSH uh, config. So I'm going to go back over to here and I'm going to paste what I got in the GitHub repository. I'm going to press return or enter. And then you will see um, down here Looking over it. Okay, it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to go back over the repository and you see that I'm going to take out this one and I'm going to put yes in uh, or replace the without password. I'm going to put yes. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to replace this with yes. Then I'm going to go over to the left and I'm going to take out the hash. Okay, now that looks good. Always make sure you take out the, uh, the, the hashtag symbol right there. So um, all these right here are comments, so they're not actually active. So I'm going to say Control X, then I'm going to press Y, then I'm going to press Return or Enter. And that right there, save that file. Okay, now I'm going to go back over to here. Step four is restart the SSH. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste this in. And I'm going to press return or enter. And then you can see that. Also, you can go here and you can see the status of it. So you can see it. it, it is active and it didn't crash or anything, so I'll let you know that everything is working fine on it. So we're going to go back over here. And now this is just, uh, you're going to do a git clone of this repository. Then it's going to create a scripted backup. And you're going to uh, change the SSH servers. And then you're, you, you can run the backup and restore. So um, I'm going to do all that. So while you're in the terminal, um, the console, then um, so we're going to do sudo and then apt git in, uh, install. And then we're going to install rsync on here. And once that's installed, just make sure it did install correctly. It did. OK, so. So there we go. It did install correctly. 
So I'm going to go over uh, uh, getting uh, the script and backup into your directory with Git clone. And um, so I'm going to copy this right here. And I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm going to go in the directory that I want it in. So I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm going to press return or enter. It's going to clone it, it all in there. And then, um, so now we're going to just go into the scripted backup directory. And then now you can see all your, um, your files are in there. So we're going to go over the, uh, how the backup script works. And, um, so we're going to go, uh, use the ZS set, Z, SH. Then we're going to uh, set the SSH server details. You'll need to set this so it'll be root and then your IP address that you've assigned to the Proxmox container. Then you'll set the file prefix. I set mine to scripted by, uh, underscore backup underscore. Then directory to store backups. So this will be inside this like here right here. This will be right here to where you can name this anything you want, but you can cha change it if you'd like. But you'd have to uh, change the restore script as well. Um, so, file name. I've generated a file name and put the file prefix on the uh, first of it. And then I've put a date and time. And then uh, we name it a .zip. So now we're going to sync the sh .scripted directory from the SSH server. So this is going to use our sync. Then we are going to um, put uh, op options on it. Then we're going to exclude the, not mo the node modules to make the backup um, uh, OS in size. So then we're going to S put the SSH server right here. Then we're going to put uh, the directory that the SSH server has. So it's going to be root and then dot script. Then we're going to put it inside of this right here in the current directory. Then we're going to zip up the dot scripted directory. So now we're going to zip. Then we're going to recursively, uh, since it's a directory. So then we're going to uh, say file name, and this is this. So we're going to zip up this that we got from our sync. And we're going to zip it up in the dot scripted directory over here. So we're going to check if the directory exists. So we're going to check if the backup directory exists on the uh, on this side. We're going to check if this directory exists. Then destination directory exists and moving file. So this means that it does exist. And then this means it doesn't exist. So it's going to create it if it doesn't exist. And then now we've created the backups directory. Now we're going to set a max time to wait in seconds. So we're going to move the file, then we're going to start the timeout uh, a countdown. So we're going to use the timeout duration. We're going to check if the dot zip exists because uh, sometimes the dot zip can take a little bit to zip up. So, um, so I had to add a timeout on it. So file exists. I move it to de a destination directory. So we're going to move it to the backup directory right here. And then we're going to remove the dot scripted directory from the current. And then we're, we're going to clean it. So that's how the backup dot sh works. So I just want to go over the uh, restore file now and um, show you how it works. So close out all those. Then we're going to go back into restore. So now. We're going to go to bin uh, zsh. We're going to set it there. Then local directory where the file is located. So we're going to set a variable and then dot backups. That's this one that the backup script uh, puts the backups in. So we're going to set the SSH server details on this variable right here. So it's going to be root and then your IP address that is assigned to your container. So remote directory where the file will be copied. So the remote directory is uh, dash root. And then 
delete scripted restore directory if it exists. So if this directory didn't clean up for some reason in the last restore, it will clean it up again. Um, so get the latest file name. So the, the latest file name is uh, the local directory, and then it's getting the latest file in here by ls. So copy file from backups uh, to the current directory. So it's going to copy, and then it's going to go in a local directory and the latest file and uh, name. Then it's going to copy this to the uh, current directory. Of here, over here. So it's going to unzip the latest file name into dot scripted dash restore. Then it's going to rsync the latest file to the SSH server with password authentication. So it's going to rsync it. Um, it's going to go in the dot scripted dash restore. Then it's going to go to dot scripted. Then it's going to SSH into the remote directory and then it's going to um, sync it all to the dot scripted. So now we're going to set permissions. Well, we're going to set the user's root on the remote directory dot scripted because sometimes the, um, the users and owners can be off. So CD remote directory dot scripted. So we're going to go into there and then we're going to remove the not node modules if it exists. Then we're going to run npm install. That's where it's going to um, get it down from npm and install all the packages in there, the scripted server. Then we're going to go into the service scripted and then we're going to restart it. Okay, now we have the scripted back up and running with the restart command. So now we're going to clean up the current directory and make sure it's all clean for the next restore if you have to ha have one. So we're going to remove the dot scripted dot dash restore directory. Then we're going to remove the zip file that was put in here with, with this command right here, the, co the copy command. So that is how the restore process works. So, okay, let's um, show you how to back up the um, scripted. So, with the dot, with the um, backup.sh, we're going to um, be inside the directory of the scripted backup. Okay, now we're going to do SSH, uh, SH, and then we're going to do backup SH. We're going to run this. So it's going to ask for the server's password. So we're going to put it in. Then it's going to go through it and it's going to move the directory. So let's go to here. You can see that it did move it. So, OK, now we're going to break the install and we're going to restore it with the last backup we done. So. I have a working scripted installation with ring plugin. Then you got the NFI protect. Uh, so I've got all these plugins in. So now we're going to go to warp. At, then we're going to um, clear out that. So we're going to go to SH. And then this is a little command that I created to where it just breaks the install. It actually makes it uh, create a whole new scripted directory and then it creates an account all over so you can create an account in it. So uh, now I'm going to just show you the um, break SH. So it's setting this as the server details. Then it's going in to delete the dot script directory if it exists. It's going in to remove the dot script directory. Then it's uh, uh, doing server scripted restart. So this breaks the install, and if we go over to the browser, you can see that it did connection interrupt, and it was working before. Okay, now it's going to go back in. It's going to say create account, and it's completely broken and started over. So now we're going to use our handy-dandy restore functionality. So we're going to sh, then we're going to restore.sh. So 
we're going to return. We're going to run this. And then we're going to put in the, uh, the remote server's pa password. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to do it again. Then it is completely up and running now and should be working. Okay, we're going to go back over the browser. And you can see that when I refresh this, it should be fine. Okay, now it's back up and running. It's restored the backup that we've created. And it has all the plugins in it still. Unify Protect, Ring. So it's got everything that it had before in it. And it's back up and running. So that is how you back up and restore scripted. So I made it a, re a really easy uh, a utility for you to where you can just run the commands and it'll uh, back up and restore. And uh, and if you have any questions on the commands and how they work, you can always join the Discord, Big Bear Community down there. And uh, let me know how you like it too. If you like it and if people start using it more, I'll try to improve it and make it more fancy. So. Um, so if this helped you, uh, subscribe, comment, like, and stay tuned for more tutorials.